were, were there. All right. Okay, well, welcome commissioners and members of the public to this June 10th uh, BTSSC meeting. I'd like to go ahead and uh, call the meeting to order as well as establish a roll call. Great, uh, Tim. Here. Lizzie. Yes, sir. Lizzie. I don't know if you're, you're you are here though. Um, Brooke. Here. Uh, Francois not here yet. Ayush. Here. Joe's not here yet. Uh, Crasson. Yeah. Excellent. So we have missing so far is Joe, Francois, and Jessica. Okay. Great. All right. All right. Um, yeah, moving on to item number two, oaths of offices. We've got a couple new commissioners that we're welcoming today. So Francois, yep. I'm going to start with. Yeah, I got a, I got a message from <clears throat> Francois about a half hour ago. He said he has finals and might not um, be able to make this meeting. So we would need to just um, swear him in at the next meeting if we don't see him today. Um, if he comes in after this item, then we'll have to kind of stop and swear him in and then um, he can participate. So uh, with that, I want to welcome Krasin Kovachev. He is our newest commissioner. And because Francois is not here, he will be acting as a regular commissioner and not the alternate. So um, I've already kind of onboarded Krasin with an orientation, but we want to welcome him and give him the chance to perhaps um, spend a, a minute or, or so um, to introduce himself and um, you know his interests on the BTSSC, and then we can move over into the oath of office. Um, thank you, everybody. First, I'm glad to be here. I'm excited, uh, looking to see what it actually is about. Uh, the name is Krasen. Um, I've been living in Davis for the past 12 years, and I'm an avid bicyclist, basically. Bicycling and uh, walking are my two main uh, means of transportation. Um, I have uh, my profession, my back, uh, background uh, is transportation technology, and I also have background in safety. So I decided that uh, that, uh, that commission is a good place for me to try and help the community and so here I am basically that's it and he was also a participant in the bike parties too yes yes yeah I have it's been a while though it's been a while it but, has uh, been a while but I remember soon. <laughs> that's good hopefully soon we have now two small kids so gotta be a bigger bigger bike <laughs> nice mm -hmm. well welcome Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and now you need to read the statement that I have posted on, in front of you. Uh, sure. <clears throat> I, Krasen Kovacev, solemnly swear um, that I will, I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, uh, foreign and domestic, that they will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation on purpose or uh, of evasion, and that I will well and painfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. Excellent, thank you. Great, thank you, Kras. And so the only thing left for you to do um, after the meeting um, to go ahead and sign that and send that to me, and then I'll sign it and send it to the city clerk. <clears throat> And you, uh, you actually sign it, you sign it in blood um, also. It's not, not just time. Okay. And he has the, the copy of it, Brian. Uh, yeah, good point. I need to send that to him. All right. Excellent. Well, welcome. And um, all right, moving on to the approval of today's agenda. Would someone like to make a motion to approve today's agenda? I'll move to approve the minutes. 
On the agenda, sorry. Okay, is there a second? This is Lizzie, I'll second. Okay. Thank you. I, I was waiting for Ayush to second, but I guess not yet. <laughs> I was waiting for others. I knew if I would go, someone would go. So I it's waited. Your last, is this your last meeting? We need you to step up today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tim. Uh, yes. Hi. Uh, Lizzie. Hi. Jessica. Hi. Brooke. Hi. Uh, Ayush? Aye. And Joe? Aye. And Crassi? Aye. Excellent. All right. Moving on. Great. <clears throat> Moving on to item number four, uh, brief announcements of, from staff and, and liaisons. Jennifer, anything from the bike ped program? Yes, I wanted to share that today um, we had a, a meeting in person um, with Love Locks, which is a company that's developing a bike security system that attaches to our existing bike racks in Davis. They're our technology company. And um, we brought in some community members to talk about bike security and bike theft in Davis. Um, and it's the first kind of like crack at, at conversations about what we need and, and what works best for our uh, community and to prevent um, bike theft. And that was, um, uh, it was a great meeting and we hope to have um, more of these meetings and getting more and more of our uh, public involved in the process. Um, and so uh, we're really excited to work with um, Love Locks on this a pilot project. They're only working with the city of Davis and UC Davis. And um, it's, an, it's an exciting opportunity to see if we can really um, address some of the bike theft problems that we are facing. So. Can you give us like a 30 second overview on what, what the technology actually does? I understand that it increases safety. How does it do that? I don't know, Brian, do you wanna take that 30 second? I don't know, I, we don't really have an answer to that yet because it hasn't been, it, the technology really has not been um, designed yet. It's, it's very up in the air. The whole point of today's meeting, it wasn't just to say, we are going to force this technology on you. It's asking what, what we want and then coming back and saying, all right, well, we're hearing what you want and now we're going to try to figure out how to adapt to your needs. So instead of it being like, um, they, they reference like the idea of scooters and how they just popped up one night in Sac or San Francisco and just showed up on the streets. They're taking a totally different approach where it's more about figuring out what, what we actually want and then trying to make that, um, that a reality. Got it. Sounds like early days. Very early days. All right. Anything else? Um, no, that's pretty much it for right now. Okay. Uh, item 4B, Council Liaison, uh, Council Member Chapman. Good evening, everyone. Um, I don't have anything uh, particularly to update this evening. Um, yeah, so that's it for me tonight. Welcome to uh, Crossland for, um, you know, joining the commission. Good luck with it, with it all. Appreciate you uh, volunteering your time to, uh, to the city. Thank you. I will comment, Commissioner or Council Member Chapman, that I did see you at the ballpark as well as your son pitching, and he's an incredible pitcher. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right, moving on to item uh, 4C. Any other staff announcements? Let me take a quick look, see if there's anything I want to highlight from the announcements that I um, drafted. I don't think so. Just to uh, uh, highlight some of the budget that, um, you know, budget requests that we made for this upcoming fiscal year. Uh, we do have a new position um, that will be related to, to traffic engineering that we expect to be approved by city council. And so uh, once that occurs, we'll be able to um, advertise for it and hopefully um, have somebody on board 
relatively soon. Um, we'll also be advertising for the Safe Routes to School coordinator position that's been um, funded but vacant this year in part because school um, largely was distance learning. So we're able to, um, to experience that salary savings from leaving that position open for a little bit. Um, and then there was a handful of other requests <clears throat> that we made that uh, we're, not, aren't, we're not expecting to be um, approved for funding. So just wanted to point that out to the group. And I saw that the, that the traffic calming program is not gonna receive its 100,000 allocation. Is that like, I mean, can you expand on that? I mean, I know we've got a lot of things in the hopper. How far can we go with the existing budget before we run out? Yeah, so I think that, you know, obviously it's gonna take us some time for the, um, so the funding that we have now would carry over. It just, we, it, it wouldn't be added into, uh, we won't get a new allocation of it in the next fiscal year. So um, conceivably, you know, it'll take us some time to expend the funds from this year with all the projects that we're passing through the commission, but there could conceivably be, you know, sort of a lay period towards the end of next fiscal year where we would have traffic calming locations where we would be ready to um, install them, but that we wouldn't have the funding for it. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on to item number five, public comment. At this time, any members of the public may address the commission on matters which are not listed on the agenda or are listed on the consent calendar. And if you'd like to speak, um, please raise your hand or push star nine. All right, Cindy or Ron, you have the floor. Oh, they disappeared. Um, anyone else would like to speak? There. Oh, Cindy, you're here. Hello? Still on she got moved over to the panelist section. Did you intend to do that? She's on the panel section, just on mute. Yeah. Has to unmute. No, I didn't intend to do that. When I hit the allow to speak, it no, she's not, no, she's unmuted. Unmuted. Are you? Are we yeah. okay now? Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, we've lived here for 35 years since 1986, and traffic has increased significantly. First of all, when Humboldt was opened up and expanded from beyond the tennis courts to connect with Arlington. Since then, we've experienced Unitrans buses, which right now are running twice an hour. It used to be more, but that was reduced. The addition of a second school, the elementary school of Patwin, Emerson was there when we moved in. We have also had the addition of a fairly large, I, I don't know if you call it a regional park with Arroyo, but with two pools, a lot of fun toys and lots of people walk on it every day, including us. Um, Westwood Park already existed, but that's right in this Humboldt area. Um, so what we're talking about is Humboldt mitigation that's been implemented since all of this increase in traffic. And basically, a few years ago, I was able to get bike lane striping added. We didn't have that. And also, we were able to get a crosswalk from Humboldt, from Barclay crossing Humboldt with um, some sort of a post in the middle that says, you know, pedestrian crossing or something like that. But basically, there's been no other speed mitigation efforts, and we're really happy that we might be able, after 20 years or so, of trying to get traffic calmed on Humboldt, maybe get some speed bumps. And I will mention that Arthur turns on to Humboldt and Arlington, and there's no stop signs. So we're a nice thoroughfare. And I'm concerned when Russell gets calmed to be a quote unquote, social gathering place will be the wave route of choice. So I'm really hoping we get the speed humps. And then my husband wanted to say a little bit too. 
Yes, thank you. I'm Ron Kangas. Uh, I read, <clears throat> excuse me, I read in the uh, Davis Enterprise that uh, some time ago that Humboldt Avenue is one of two really long streets going through residential areas that have no stop signs or stop lights. And as my wife pointed out, the traffic has increased substantially, not just uh, cars and, and uh, uh, bu uh, buses, but bicycles going to the school and pedestrians. Uh, in addition to this, we are very much in favor of the, uh, the speed humps, but would also like to see a stop sign put in at Barclay and Humboldt uh, as the traffic is very, very heavy there with school children. And uh, I, I think this would be an inexpensive way uh, to uh, help you know, slow down the traffic. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much for um, attending our meeting and sharing that. See another um, member of the public? Yeah. Frank, go ahead. Frank? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. I just um, wanted to bring attention to the committee here. I was doing some background research into something called the Alternative Transportation Corridor between the cities of Davis and Woodland, which uh, would create mm -hmm. a similar path as what exists currently between Davis and Winters with the, the dedicated bike and pedestrian path. Uh, it seemed as though in the early 2010s, it was uh, brought forth to this committee or the city council and then kind of fizzled out. So I'm just hoping to bring it back to this committee's attention. Maybe there could be an update on that program with the possibility of additional state or federal dollars um, that can be funneled into this project as it seems the city of Davis was designated as a the, the head of this project. Um, that was all, just wanted to bring that to attention. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else would like to speak? Okay. Um, seeing none, Tim, I think we're done with public comment. Perfect. Uh, moving on to item uh, number six, which is the consent calendar. There's three items on the consent calendar and they're considered routine and non-controversial requiring a discussion as items are expected to have unanimous support may be enacted by one motion. Would anyone like to make a motion to pass the items on the consent calendar today? This is Ayush. I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. All right. Is there uh, looking for a second? This is Joe, I'll second. Great. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna go to roll call. Tim. Aye. Lizzie. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Brooke. Aye. Ayush. Aye. Joe. Aye. Crasson. Aye. Excellent. And I was just going to just make a comment. I know Jessica looks like you're driving and Joe, you may be driving too. Like, feel free to turn the video off. Um, you know, it's, you know, we're, you know street safety. Uh, still don't want any distracted uh, situations. Okay. Um, moving on to, glad you can join now, obviously. Um, moving on to the regular items on uh, item, um, 7A, uh, the Fifth Street Improvement Pilot Project from L Street to Full Line Road. Brian? Yeah, so um, it's not my item. We have uh, Melissa Marshall here from our engineering team who um, will introduce the project and kind of go through um, that item. Um, but I, I'm not sure she has presented to this group of um, the BTSSC, but want to welcome her to the group and then hand it over to her for her presentation and then uh, discussion. Thanks, Brian. Uh, really quick, am I uh, letting someone else know when I need to go to the next slide? Yep, it's me. Okay, thanks, Jennifer. 
Okay, so yeah, as Brian mentioned, my name is Melissa Marshall and I am a civil engineer for the City of Davis Public Works Engineering and Transportation Department. I'm also the project manager for the project that will be repaving Fifth Street between L Street and Poline Road and the implementation of a pilot striping project that will be addressing the bike lane gap between L and Poline Road. Um, as many of you are aware, there's a project under construction right now on 5th Street in front of the courtyard. Uh, there's a sewer lift station located in the median of 5th Street that needs its components to be replaced. And so the project is actually constructing a new lift station um, at the southeast corner of the courtyard and the existing station in the, uh, in the median is being abandoned. So as part of that project, a segment of the roadway will be repaved. The segment uh, between L Street and Poline Road actually was scheduled to be repaved last fall, but was postponed due to the lift station work. So the department felt that it would be a great uh, idea to then continue and pave the remainder of the segment following the completion of the lift station work. Um, and then last winter, Bike Davis actually reached out to the city regarding that long term goal to add in the bike lane on Fifth Street between L and Poline Road and then engage the city's consultant bike minded to help develop some comments for a road diet. Um, but these efforts were shelved as uh, we encountered COVID. But now that there's a plan to repave the segment and the city's also receiving um, some SACOG grant funding for this uh, corridor to study this corridor, it makes sense to work on a goal to add in the bike lane for this segment. So the city has decided to make this a two phase approach. Uh, phase one would be a pilot striping project uh, to implement the bike lane striping concept. And then phase two would be in the future, once the city has a chance to study the effects of the pilot striping, and it would include more permanent striping changes and some other enhancements. Uh, so for the existing situation, some sections of the street have medians and some do not. There are no bike lanes, just one off street multi-use pathway on the south side of Fifth Street. Um, there's two travel lanes in each direction that are 13 to 14 feet uh, in width, depending on if there's a median or not. And of course, the striping doesn't meet the current standards and needs to be updated once the paving is completed. Uh, so this um, is the initial um, bike minded bike Davis concept. Um, in summary, um, this would include 11 foot travel lanes where the medians exist and a five foot buffer and then an eight foot bike lane. And then on the north side of the street, there would be a two foot door zone uh, between the seven foot parking lane and the bike lane. Then on the south side of the street, there would be a two foot gutter um, between the eight foot bike lane and the off street uh, multi-use uh, pathway to the south, which actually is um, a 10 foot lane and not standard. So we might be adjusting this during implementation. Um, and then in locations where the, oh, going back to the other one, in the locations where a center turn lane exists in place of medians, travel lanes would be 10 feet and the buffer would be increased from five feet to nine feet. And then on the south street, south side of the street, the buffer would vary, but be up to 10 feet in some locations. Uh, next slide, okay. Um, and then on the west side of the corridor uh, at L Street, the main things to highlight are the addition of the green skipped boxes for bicycle conflict zones, um, the addition of green markings at the beginning of bike lanes to help bring people's attention to those, those bike lanes, and then the addition of additional three to four parking spots on the north side of Fifth Street, east of the gas station. And then in front of the courtyard, you'll see there's some addition of some other green conflict zones to help draw attention to the large vehicles entering and exiting daily. Um, you'll see that also that segment uh, includes a median and then also a turn lane. Um, and we talked with some of the business owners and one of the concerns was that if we were to remove a travel lane, um, that the trucks that double park to make deliveries uh, you know, they would be then parking in the bike lane. So we're contemplating possibly adding an unloading zone around this area. Um, in front of the 1818 courtyard and community garden, you'll see it's pretty similar to the previous slide where there's no median, but there's some more conflict zones uh, in front of the driveways. And then on the east side of the corridor at Poline Road, um, we're going, the, the main thing to note is that we're going to be keeping the two westbound lane uh, travel lanes through the intersection and merging them together after the free right turn lane. And as part of the corridor, the city will be determining how to redesign the pole line 
Fifth Street intersection. So until then, we want to keep this area untouched and focus on the area to the west. So as part of the corridor study and phase uh, phase two implementation, we'd be looking into enhancements such as possibly uh, adding in some low bump uh, or flexible delineators between the bike lane and the travel lane, removing some of the median to allow left-hand turn lanes when traveling eastbound uh, for accessing the businesses on the north side of Fifth Street, uh, potentially uh, adding in a mid-block crossing somewhere, uh, removal of the fence uh, between the off-street pathway and the eastbound bike lane, and then looking at some possibly some adjustments of some locations of the bus stops and amenities. And then, of course, changes to the Fifth Street and Pole Line intersection. So for the tentative schedule, I think it's on the next slide. Um, we're looking at trying to advertise this project later this month, uh, opening bids in uh, July with awarding in early August and then construction sometime in September once the paving is completed for the lift station work. And then um, I guess I just want to say that uh, we probably wouldn't be coming back and uh, to the commission again um, before this project is underway just because of the you know timeline associated with trying to get this project out to bid and then into construction. And I think just our recommendation would be to uh, simply support the pilot striping plan to implement bike lanes. Tim, you're on. You're on mute, Tim. Sorry. Any, um, Brian, any other comments before we move to uh, Commissioner questions? One thing to add is that, um, you know, on that, the, the previous slide, it referenced sort of, you know, timing for the final project and um, maybe it's the slide before. You know, one more. Yeah, see that phase two? Um, so we have some grant funding from, say, COG, $100,000 to help us with kind of analysis of the fifth and pole line intersection <clears throat> and to continue some of this non-construction work. So um, the design phase for uh, for phase two will actually be a kind of occurring concurrent with um, sort of the monitoring of the pilot project, right? So um, the pilot project will go in, we're not gonna wait, you know, 12 or 18 months and then initiate design for phase two. We're gonna be doing those in parallel. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear to the commission. Thanks, Brian. Hey, any um, questions from commissioners? And uh, Crossan, I see a couple of hands go up, but just um, how we do this is we, um, if anybody has questions, you ask questions, and then we'll go to public comment, and then any uh, final comments from commissioners. So uh, I see a couple of hands up. Uh, Commissioner Hare. Yeah, thanks. I was hoping, and thank you, Melissa, for this presentation. Um, you'd mentioned sort of quickly that some of the business owners were concerned about um, these changes resulting in trucks sort of parking and loading and unloading in what would then be the bike travel lanes, but th that there was a plan to mitigate that somewhat. And I was just hoping you could speak to that a little bit more because you went through that very quickly and I didn't really catch any specifics. Thank you. Sure. Um, so I think there are some larger vehicles that already park in the center turn lane. So I think that we anticipate that there'd be some that uh, continue to do so. And then we were, I think there was one business in particular, the Red Barn Nursery that was uh, saying, you know, past uh, that turn lane that they hoped that maybe we could maybe add some a loading zone in front of their business. So uh, we just kind of need to talk with some of the other businesses. We are adding some other parking spots further down, but we really want to make sure that the if we make a loading zone and take away some parking, um, that that wouldn't severely impact the other businesses. Uh, so you know we're just kind of looking into those types of options, but don't have anything set. So. Um, that's kind of where we are right now. Okay, thank you. Brian, I don't mean to interrupt, but Francois just joined. So do we
do, do we, should we go through the oath of office next? Yeah, let's get through this item, then we'll bring him in uh, for oath of office on the next item. Um, if I can also add on to Melissa's comments, um, when we do the lane reduction in the westbound direction <clears throat> that will still enable on-street parking and so that loading zone would allow some of the smaller delivery trucks that Melissa was referencing to park fully within uh, the parking lane so there wouldn't be a conflict between the delivery vehicles and the bicycles in um, the westbound bike lane. Thanks, Brian. Carson, you have a question? Um, yeah, a couple comments uh, when I read through this. I'm more or less familiar with the, uh, with the area uh, that was part of my daily commute. So my, for my first concern is that uh, that could create pretty big plug on the west side basically on uh, at the intersection with uh, L Street, because uh, there are already sometimes with two lanes, uh, cars stand to together there. And the bigger concern actually is on the other side, uh, right in front of the DMV with the current plans, there is basically conflict zone where two lanes get together, uh, bike lanes also get there and there are people coming out of the DMV from the south exit. So I think that potentially could be a pretty bad zone, conflict zone. So I would recommend uh, a little bit more attention to be paid to, to it. That's that's my feedback. Okay. All right. And just uh, remember, well, this is time for questions and then we can make sort of comments uh, a little bit later. Um, any other questions for uh, for Melissa? Okay, I don't see any. So um, let's go ahead and move to public comment. Great, if anyone from the public would like to speak about this item, uh, please raise your hand. All right. Okay. Seeing none. Okay. Good. Any other um, any comments now from commissioners on um, on the plan? Go ahead, Joe. Uh, thanks. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, First, I want to say uh, what a delight it is to see uh, the Bike Davis logo beside the City of Davis logo and Bike Minded logo on these uh, engineering diagrams. So congrats to everyone that worked to uh, get the plans to uh, this stage. Um, I think this is a, a great concept, I think, because of the, the gap that's currently in our safe uh, bike network that um, this stretch of road merits uh, the, the conversion of one motor vehicle travel lane to a bike lane. Uh, I also think that having a loading zone uh, here should be a, a high priority. I know there's lots of truck drop offs and, you know, truck is a very um, space consuming and, and dangerous mode if it doesn't have the right space. So uh, planning for that needs to uh, get baked in from the, the beginning. Uh, those are my comments. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Great. Any other comments? Would anyone like to, to make a motion to support uh, the design? Yeah, I'll, I'll move to uh, support the staff recommendation uh, since I commented last. I'll second it. Or a huge can second, sorry. <laughs> Great. Um, Any discussion? Can we do a roll call? All right, seeing none. Tim. Aye. Lizzie. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Brooke. Aye. Ayush. Aye. Joe. Aye. Crassy. Aye. All right. Awesome. Um, well, yeah, just in closing comments there, um, first of all, Melissa, nice to have you. Um, I, I think the plan is amazing um, considering where it is today. And, um, you know, hopefully 
you know, longer term phase two, we can put more protection in for, uh, for bicyclists, bicyclists there along the path. Um, but it looks awesome and would agree with Joe on, um, just a great job and collaboration with Mike Davis on this one. It's awesome. Well done. Okay. We'll move on to item 7B, which are the proposed traffic calming measures with. Uh... So Tim, um, let's... Oh, you want to stop? Yes. So we can read his oath of, of, oath of office and they can participate. Um, and then we'll talk about how our, we'll approach the, um, Traffic calming item. Sounds Jennifer, good. Jennifer, is Frank uh, in the room? I, Brian, we're getting a lot of feedback. Francois in the room? He is in the room. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm here. Um, so welcome, Francois. Um, you arrived a little bit late, but uh, what we typically do here is we uh, welcome all of our new commissioners, which we've done with Crossan already give them a moment or two to introduce themselves and explain their interests in uh, serving on the BTSSC and then uh, have you read your oath of office and then we just proceed to the next item. But uh, welcome, appreciate you joining us and um, share us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure thing. So, so I think as Brian mentioned, my name is Francois. Uh, I am, I'm a senior at UC Davis. Uh, actually, I'm about to graduate at, on Saturday. Wow. So, yep, that's going to be exciting and scary at the same time. Uh, also, apologies for being late because I thought that the meeting was going to be at 6 p.m., not 5 p.m. That is, that is on me. Uh, my, I guess my interest in the BTSSC is that I guess I was always kind of interested in transportation issues because I guess kind of one of the roles that I serve on is I'm a research assistant for, the, for uh, working in the Institute of Transportation Studies at UC Davis where I kind of help do some work on the capital travel survey. I've also kind of served as the chair of the unit trans advisory committee where Brian and Jeff have guided me through a lot of unit trans policy. So I think, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Right. Trying to be respectful of people's time. Well, why don't you read the oath that's um, in front of you on the screen, please? I, Francois Capelin, solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. Great, thank you so much. Okay. Francois, um, after the meeting, I will send you a copy of that for signature and then you can uh, sign it, scan it, uh, and send it back to me electronically and I'll forward to the city clerk. Okay. Welcome Francois. And I feel like I use Francois is like our, our new young blood uh, from, uh, from the Unitrans experience. So it's great. Uh, okay, moving on to item 7B, the traffic calming items from uh, Mr. Garcia Long. Tim, before we, um, before we advance, let's just we'll kind of walk through the commissioners on how we're going to handle this because <clears throat> we have two locations where we have some conflicts with a couple of commissioners. So um, Joe uh, Bolte and Ayush Patel are conflicted out of the Radcliffe location. So um, they'll need to recuse themselves from that. And Jessica Jacobson is uh, conflicted out of the Miller uh, Drive item. Um, so what we're gonna do is have uh, Joey Garcia Long go through all of the items except those two. And then we'll make, um, if the commission is so inclined, we'll make a motion on that group of locations. Um, and then, we'll start to bring, we'll, we'll deal with the other two locations independently. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask now before we get started. But they will have to actually get off the, the, the Zoom and then come back on to Zoom. You just cannot black your screen, correct, Brian? 
No, they have to leave the meeting entirely, so they can't um, they can't be present in the room. So Jennifer, we'll need to find have a way to kind of get back in contact with them. Um, so um, hopefully we have their phone numbers, and maybe we should sort of figure out how we're going to do that now. I have their okay, phone Tim, numbers. Okay, Tim, you can contact them. Um, and so um, yeah, I think we were going to do um, Radcliffe, uh, Radcliffe first after no. the after the larger group. No. no, no, Miller. No, first. okay. Yeah. All right. And then Ryan, because they're an alpha. Okay. Partner. We'll let you know and um, stick around uh, until we we let you know. <laughs> we let you know. That I, I just want to jump in just for one second, Jerry, before you begin. And I just want to say that I think that historically these items would be on the consent calendar, and and so, but because that there's quite a lot of um, you know, surveys that have been done across the public, then we put this on the regular item, but. Hopefully this is very non-controversial um, and, you know, 100% focused on increasing safety on the streets. Sorry, Joey. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of locations tonight, which is on all uh, all the districts of the city. So and we're bound to run into a few commissioner locations. So I appreciate everyone's uh, patience with that. Um, the, the following locations we're discussing, um, include the highest ranked group evaluated last year as part of the city's annual traffic calming program. Traffic calming requests were received from residents of these neighborhoods, expressing concerns vehicles were traveling at excessive speeds, uh, motorists were using local residential streets as cut-throughs, and that pedestrian safety uh, was being compromised. Due to the length of the roadway segments and limited funding for the traffic calming program, uh, speed humps were identified as a traffic calming option and a uh, safety solution. Uh, surveys were mailed to the neighborhoods requesting feedback on whether residents were in favor of this traffic calming option and if they were willing to have a speed hump installed in front of their residents. Uh, the surveys were focused on residents fronting these streets, but were also expanded to nearby residences for additional feedback. The threshold to move forward with this option was a 50% response rate and 67% support from responding residences. Uh, response rates we, we found um, were lower in neighborhoods with a, a higher percentage of rental properties. Um, so staff is recommending move, moving forward uh, for neighborhoods that did not meet this 50% response rate. Um, Jennifer, if you could go to the Arroyo Avenue slide, please. Uh, for Arroyo Avenue, there have been uh, two reported collisions uh, since 2015. Uh, one involved a vehicle traveling at unsafe speeds. Uh, staff is recommending the installation of a raised crosswalk at the existing marked crosswalk adjacent to the park um, in order to prioritize uh, safety of pedestrians and cyclists. Um, based on feedback from the residents, the initial number of speed humps uh, was redu reduced for this street segment. Let's go to the next slide, thank you. Um, uh, staff is uh, also recommending uh, the installation of a raised crosswalk on Chestnut Lane, Chestnut Lane um, adjacent to the park um, to uh, prioritize safety and access of pedestrians. Um, the recommended speed humps and raised crosswalks would also discourage motorists from using Chestnut Lane as a cut through um, to avoid the arterial connecting streets of Pole Line Road and um, East A Street. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, there are two reported um, collisions on Emerald Bay Drive since 2015. Uh, both involved a vehicle traveling at an unsafe speed. Um, this is another location where uh, we reduced the number of proposed speed humps um, based on resident feedback. Uh, next slide, please. All right. Uh, there are two reported um, collisions on Humboldt Avenue since 2015. Uh, one involving a pedestrian and the other a cyclist. Um, we uh, prioritize locations on this street in advance of the existing uncontrolled school crosswalks at Imperial Avenue. And now if you- I have to go to this though. Yeah, let's skip a couple. Perfect. 
Um, for Vista Way, um, there's been speed humps um, installed on the adjacent section of El Macero Drive. Um, residents have expressed concerns that this has increased traffic volumes on Vista Way. Um, and again, the recommended speed humps would discourage motorists uh, using Vista Way as a cut through uh, to avoid the nearby streets of Cow Boulevard and Mace Boulevard. Um, and with that, I'm available for questions for these five street segments. Thanks, Joey. Any questions from commissioners? I see uh, Commissioner Ostrom. Um, with regard for Humboldt Avenue, with regards to the public comment earlier, I was trying to find my notes, but I, didn't we discuss the idea of a, a speed table um, there at Barclay, where that comes into Humboldt? Yeah, initially uh, we discussed uh, more speed humps or speed tables further east, um, but based on the uh, feedback um, from residents regarding whether they're in favor of speed humps or whether they allow, you know, approve of them in front of their homes, those were kind of omitted. Um, and also, yeah, going back to the resident comments, um, we're focusing right now on the locations adjacent to the school. Uh, we'll also be looking into additional um, stop control or um, other improvements uh, further east on Humboldt. Would, would the speed table fall under the same approval process as the uh, speed bumps? Or is that a separate type of process if that was something that, that was indicated by the residents? Um, for uh, specific to traffic calming, it would require 67% um, approval of responding uh, residents. Um, if it's considered more of a, a safety item or if it's at an existing crosswalk, then we'd probably uh, move forward without the uh, resident input. Okay, thanks. Any other questions from commissioners? Uh, hearing none, we go to public comment. So public comment is open. If you would like to speak, please raise your hand. Okay. Seeing none, moving on. Okay. Move into any commissioner comments or, uh, yeah. I do have a clarification question. Uh, what is a fronting? I'm a little bit new to traffic calming, so excuse excuse my. Uh. No worries. That, that that refers to any property that is immediately on the street or adjacent to it. Usually, they have a, a driveway on the actual street. Sometimes they'll be at corners, but they'll still be adjacent to it. Um, so that was kind of the the focus on people who are immediately adjacent to the streets and dealing with the. Um, speeding and, and safety issues that um, have come out. Um, as I mentioned, we kind of expanded our feedback to adjacent streets because a lot of the uh, minor uh, roadways that um, go into these streets are also going to be impacted by the speed hump. So we wanted their feedback as well. But um, that's what differentiates a, a fronting residents from the others that we serve in. Thank you. Any other commissioner comments? And if there are further comments, um, oh, I see a hand go up. Commissioner Balti. Looks like you're on mute. No. No? No. I'm not on mute, though. Mm. I'm not on mute. Hello. Mm. Can you hear me now? Yes. There, Hello. Go. there we go. Oh, great. Uh, not sure what happened there. Um, I support these recommendations. I would also be in favor of lowering um, the response threshold from 50%. That seems really high for a voluntary response thing uh, to me. And uh, just overall, I think the city should be proactive and bold on safety and cautious about um, top motor vehicle speed. So without understanding the, the process through which that threshold is set. 
um, I think it would be a good idea to consider uh, low red traffic calming measures. Oh, thank you, Joe. Just um, to provide um, some additional information on where those uh, thresholds came from, um, the 67% of responding residents in favor and 50% response rate comes from the city's uh, policy uh, for the installation of undulations. Uh, mind you, this policy hasn't been updated in approximately 20 years, so it's definitely uh, worth uh, looking into. Um, and also wanted to clarify that the 67% threshold is a must, while the 50% response rate is a should. So um, it is possible for us to uh, waive that requirement. Okay. Um, would anyone like to make a, um, a motion to follow staff recommendations here? Brooke, it's your turn. Um, yes, I would move to follow staff, staff recommendations regarding these traffic calming improvements. Uh, is there a second? I will second. Great. Any discussion? I didn't catch you seconded. Francois, stepping right in. Yeah, just stepping right in. <laughs> All right, Jennifer. All take. right, sorry, Tim. Uh, Tim. Hi. Lizzie. Hi. Jessica. Hi. Brooke. Hi. Francois. Hi. Joe. Hi. Okay. Excellent. All right, now Jessica, okay. you need to, um, um, I guess, close out of Zoom and. Tim is going to call you back when it's ready to when you're um, able to come back. Jennifer. Yes. You forgot me, but you don't have to close out. I you forgot you in the roll call. Oh shoot! I oh. I. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so am I. So am I. Crossing as well. Oh no! I meant to skip you, um, Crossing. Is that um, we have you are an alternate, and now that. Um, Francois is here. I skipped over you because, um, but I did not mean to skip. I was sorry about that. Okay, looks like Commissioner Jacobson dropped off. Can I make a, a quick comment? Um, I needed to revise the motion to reflect uh, regarding traffic calming improvements for all segments except Miller Drive and Radcliffe since we needed to separate those. I just want to make sure that the commission's okay with us. I think we're fine with that. But thanks for, thanks for clarifying. Okay, so commissioner, I'm um, sorry, um, uh, city staff, um, Joey, would you like to cover this one? Yeah, so um, we're on Miller Drive, correct? That's right. Uh, for Miller Drive, there was uh, one reported uh, collision since 2018 involving uh, a vehicle traveling at unsafe speeds. Uh, the proposed number of speed humps um, was reduced on this segment and um, placed south of 8th Street. Based on resident feedback, there was a um, pretty clear distinction between residents uh, north and south of 8th Street, whether um, they uh, wanted the speed humps or not. Um, also, the recommended speed humps would discourage motorists using Miller Drive as a cut through um, to avoid the connecting streets of Russell Boulevard and B Street. Thank you, Joey. Um, any commissioner questions? Okay. All right. Any public comment? Uh, any public comment about Miller Drive? Oh, Jennifer, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, just a moment, if, if I may turn on my uh, video. May I turn on my video? I don't know if your video is going to work. I, I, it might work, but it probably. I don't. I don't know. I don't think it does. Okay. I just had a, a map of the street that I was going to. Um, comment toward, so I'll do it verbally. Um, 
I am uh, very interested in the safety uh, of Miller Drive for all as well. So I appreciate you addressing this issue. Um, Miller Drive is heavily traveled by the bottom half of it. I'm not sure about the top, the eighth to B section, but the Russell to eighth section is heavily traveled by bicycles and pedestrians as well. So I'd really like to focus on those folks when we're thinking about the speeds on Miller and how we can make everyone safer. Um, I'm concerned about the location of the speed humps. I realized that the, that was in response to feedback from the residents. There's quite a large gap between the two, which given the speeds of the drivers, um, I'm concerned that they'll simply accelerate in that middle section, which will um, not be safe for the cyclists and the pedestrians. And a lot of uh, runners are also on, on the street. Um, in, in that middle section. I would like to encourage the city to add uh, bike lanes to the streets to visually narrow the, this very wide street. And um, also at the ends of the street, meaning Russell and Miller and 8th and Miller, uh, cars have a, have a tendency to cut the corners as they're traveling east on Russell and turning onto Miller. Um, they are cutting the corner there. And also when they're traveling west on 8th, and I've experienced this personally, they're cutting the corner. Um, so a bicyclist sitting at those intersections waiting to cross are in danger. So I would like to encourage the city to put um, some type of barrier at those intersections, whether they're the large uh, rectangular uh, street humps um, to protect and divide the lanes at those intersections. And this is also occurring at 7th and Miller, where cars traveling south on Miller turning on to 7th Street are cutting the corner, which is endangering the cyclist that is uh, waiting there. Um, other than that, I think I've gone through most of my notes here. Um, so uh, recap, bike lane striping to, um, for bike safety and to narrow the street. Uh, the large lane markers at the intersections to prevent cutting the corners and um, somehow addressing the concern of this car speeding between the two speed humps. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Would anyone else like to speak? Okay. Back to you, Tim. Great. Any um, commissioner comments? All right. I think we'd be looking for, similar to the previous um, roads, we'd be looking for a um, somebody to make a motion to follow through on staff. Okay. I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll make a motion to follow staff recommendations. Okay, looking for a second. This is a usual second. Okay. Great, any discussion? Joe, you have your hand up. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious if, if Joey has comments um, uh, to respond to the public commenter that asked about more speed humps uh, in the middle and whether they're close enough together to effectively control motorist speed. And the, the public commenter also mentioned something about physical protection on corners. I think that they were talking about some of the um, low concrete rectangular barriers like the ones on um, Drexel and Loyola at, at some uh, intersections. Are those 
would those kinds of improvements uh, comply with uh, street standards or are they otherwise uh, inappropriate for this location? Oh, thank you, Joe, for that follow up. Um, regarding the, the number and placement of speed humps, um, currently it uh, follows ITE guidelines, but um, I've had a few residents reach out to me saying, you know, they think they're should be more and, and what I've um, responded to them is that this is a good uh, initial um, step to address the um, speeding and safety concerns on this roadway. And if it's not effective, say between the, the two speed humps, it's something we could certainly uh, reevaluate at a, a later date. Um, regarding some of the um, other improvements, um, uh, I want to reiterate that the traffic helping program is specific kind of to um, low cost, quick uh, build items. I think um, some of the improvements mentioned could possibly uh, be looked at into under um, that um, respect, um, but more like hardscaping, uh, um, expensive improvements. We could also certainly look into, but it would be part of a, a different program. Um, I'm not sure if um, some of the intersection at Russell Boulevard could be, you know, addressed as part of the Russell Boulevard, uh, you know, corridor study and improvements. I can't remember if it reaches that far east, but um, uh, we've taken a lot of feedback um, from residences who's responded and we'll certainly look into, um, you know, what they brought up and what more um, improvements could potentially be pursued. Recognition just from my okay. Thanks. I, I plan to vote for this item. Oh. Yeah. I think Brian was trying to jump in. Yeah, I'm going to add that I think that um, Joe was referring to the curb extensions at Drexel and L Street, <clears throat> and those are quite a bit um, more expensive than the budget that we uh, have, I think, in the traffic calming program. So it really comes down to how far can we extend the funding that we do have in the traffic calming program, you know, to address some of the core issues of, um, of speeding on residential streets. So um, yeah, they're, they're, they're quite a bit more expensive than just doing um, speed hunts. Great. Thanks. I plan to vote for this item and I'm glad staff is, you know, open to further improvements as uh, they may be needed and as budget allows, so that's great. Yeah, and I think I know we're in the middle of uh, voting here, but one last comment. Um, it'd be helpful to know what speed limits are, average speed limits are on these roads. And I know we've talked about that before, but I mean, I have no idea, you know, what that, what the average speed is. That, that'd be helpful if that's something that, you know, we can get. I think that we're all still in favor of these things anyway, um, regardless, but, um, but that'd be helpful to have, so. Uh, all right, great. Uh, Jennifer, did you want to move forward with the? Yep. Okay. Roll call. Uh, Tim. Aye. Lizzie. Aye. Jessica. Oh, sorry. Brooke. Uh, she's yeah. conflicted out, Jennifer. Yeah, I'm sorry. Aye. I'm paying attention to everybody's name, Brian. <laughs> Francois. Aye. Ayush. Aye. Joe. Aye. Prasen. Aye. Thanks. Okay. Good. If you give me just one second, I'll call. Jessica. Yeah. So now Ayush and Joe, you have to leave the meeting. Okay. See you later. Yeah. See you in a few. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Jacobs is going to come back in. Uh, Brian, I wanted to remark that you sort of look like an old school operator when you like take the phone and you plug it in and then you talk. <laughs> yeah, this new phone, um, for whatever reason, when I'm hooked up with my, my earbuds, um, there's something that happens over time with my microphone, so I have to unplug it and plug it back in. Oh, good. Okay, so Commissioner Jacobson is, here she is. All right. Connecting the audio. So while she does that, um, she's back on. Go ahead, um, Mr. Garcia, if you want to continue. Uh, thank you. The last location is Radcliffe Drive. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention is that there is an existing Unitrans bus route on this section of roadway. 
um, as well as on um, Humboldt Avenue. Um, just wanted to let everyone know that we, the city has reached out to Unitrans you know, um, regarding this, and they have provided the city feedback that the speed of design and placements um, would not impact their operations. Okay. Any commissioner questions? Okay. We move to public comment. Yep. Anyone for the public would like to speak about Radcliffe Drive? Ah, uh, Commissioner. Jacobson. I actually oh. wanted to make a public comment on Miller Drive. Is this the right time? No, Miller Drive has been done. Um, yeah, we sort of procedurally uh, made an error. That's right. Um, Jessica is uh, entitled to uh, to speak as a as a citizen during public comment, and we forgot to recognize that during um, the public comment period. So. Um, we can return to that um, now if you'd like to, to speak on that, Jessica. Um, the commission has made their, um, their uh, recommendation to support it. Um, so I don't know if you would still like to speak in, on public comment. I don't know what the decision was. So um, yes, I would like to, to speak. Um, I am a resident of Miller Drive and a parent of three children, the youngest of whom is six. And that child walks across the street by himself to go see another first grade friend on the other side of the street. Um, in this segment, I'm speaking about the part of Miller Drive that did not be, a, that was not proposed to receive the speed. In that section of Miller Drive, the last time there was a neighborhood count a couple of months ago, there were 13 houses with a total of 23 children. So that's almost an entire classroom of children in this one section of town who are walking, biking, playing, you know, animals um, on these streets. The residents voted 58% in, in favor of speed bumps, which is a solid majority, um, but it's not a super majority of 67%. And as I think about the sacrifices that children have made in the past year to protect our vulnerable populations, my hope is that going forward, the community is going to similarly protect our children. Um, and I do question why we require a supermajority to keep 23 children safe in an area where um, people are united in agreeing that there's a problem with speeding here. Thanks, Commissioner Jacobson. And in fact, you know, prior prior to your comments, Commissioner Bolte actually asked the same question uh, about why we require that. And so, um, I, you likely have a lot of support around that uh, around that statement. All right, um, we were moving to public comment on um, on Radcliffe. Yes, and um, Jennifer would like to speak. Go ahead, Jennifer. I had a question regarding um, the term speed hump. Is that being used interchangeably with speed table? There is a um, difference between a speed hump and speed table. Um, the speed hump, there's a city standard. I think it's roughly uh, 12 feet um, wide. Uh, speed table tends to be flatter and longer, and it's usually reserved for um, collector or other roadways that have a higher posted speed limit. And uh, does the speed hump um, extend all the way to where a bicycle would be traveling? Yes, it will um, go from edge of gutter to edge of gutter. Okay, so the um, our our bicycle population will also be having to navigate these speed humps, possibly on a dark street. Yes, there um, isn't any currently proposed cutouts for cyclists. Can, can the speed hump be replaced with a speed table if these are to go forward? 
We are moving forward with the city standard. Um, and those are intended for speed limits of 25 miles per hour, um, which is um, the situation for all seven roadway segments. Okay, thank you. Questions. All right, <clears throat> any additional, uh, oh, I see yep. another. Nico, you have the floor. Hi everyone, this is Nico, uh, Nico for Um I'm the president of Bike Davis and also Davis resident. Um, I think my comment is kind of general about the street calming in general. Um, I I understand that you know the undulation or speed humps or speed tables are part of the city standard, and so it's kind of an easy solution. But I think as we move forward and as we look at what other cities are doing, especially, we should broaden our toolbox a little bit and look at doing slow streets on these on these places and. You know, I, I think the public comments we heard before really resonate with me that these are not just places for transportation. This is a place where people are living and playing and interacting with their neighbors. And, you know, we should have cars as guests on the street that, yeah, they can go through, but let's, let's figure out how we can make that street really for everybody. And, you know, I think there's a lot more we can do than just putting speed bumps and calling it done. I think we, we need to be a little bit more creative in, in our approach to traffic calming in general, especially on those neighborhood streets. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any other public comment? Okay, closing public comment and moving to any commissioner uh, comments. And if there's no commissioner comments, we'd be seeking um, support of a uh, motion to follow through with uh, the staff recommendations here. Would anybody be willing to make a motion to support I'll move to support the staff recommendation for the Radcliffe Drive traffic coming. Great. Is there a second? I'll second it. Oh, if I can, actually, I don't know. I was, I was wondering. You can, because okay. okay. Ayush and Joe are not here. Okay. Fantastic. Should we do a uh, roll call? Yes. Tim. Aye. Lizzie. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Brooke. Aye. Francois. Aye. Crasson. Aye. Great. Tim, you can let Ayush and Joe know that they can come back. I've done so. Perfect. We'll give them just a just a minute here. Mm -hmm. okay. Welcome back. All right. While we're waiting, I just thought I would um, you know, just share my thoughts on um, the last public comment, and that yeah, I mean, ideally, we would be in a position, sort of financially and economically speaking, where we could do more on our residential streets to make them more welcoming to uh, both the neighborhoods and to other other users. Um, I think the reality is that, you know, the funding just isn't there to, you know, kind of push that um, sort of design farther than what we've been doing. And, you know, the neighborhoods themselves are really wanting the city to do something about the speeds in their neighborhoods. Um, one example of a neighborhood that did do what um, uh, what Nico was referencing is the Davis Manor neighborhood where they had their own sort of internal process where they sort of envisioned what they wanted their neighborhood to look like with narrowing the streets and doing some sustainable stormwater management and widening the sidewalks and those kinds of things. Um, and so they're sort of the prototype for doing that, but the city doesn't have the funding to uh, be able to construct, you know, the 
you know, the vision that they have for their neighborhood. And so what we've been trying to do with them is to find grant funding for them. And we haven't been successful uh, to date. We've tried at least two and possibly three times, but um, there is, a, you know, a process that can work for neighborhoods, um, but it's the challenge really is finding the funding and then how do we, you know, how do we, um, you know, what is the, the, you know, the opportunity cost that occurs at other locations where we know that we need um, traffic calming for um, for different neighborhoods. So just thought I'd share that. Thanks, Ryan. Okay, moving on to item um, 7C, the BTSSC subcommittees, Ryan? Yeah, I don't have a whole lot to add other, or, you know, beyond the staff report. I think the bottom line here is that when we um, establish the uh, sort of the, the topical subcommittees that we have, you know, the four, um, they sort of fall into the category of a standing committee. And, you know, the purpose, as I remember, for establishing those was so that we could have little smaller groups that would work within different topical areas of transportation. And whenever an item would come up to the BTSSC on the agenda or they see it on the long range calendar, that group would be able to kind of work independently, kind of dig into an item, um, perhaps between the time the, the, um, the packet is published and the meeting, get together and come sort of prepared for discuss, to lead that discussion and, and, and possibly have a motion in mind. Well, we've gotten some pretty clear guidance from our city attorney that that actually falls into the category of a standing committee, which for um, legal um, city, I'm sorry, California Brown Act, um, you know, requirements would require that to be a publicly noticed and uh, accessible meeting. And so I, you know, our recommendation is to um, dissolve the subcommittees that we've established because A, we didn't feel like that was how the commission wanted those subcommittees to function and B, um, staff isn't really willing to support four separate subcommittees um, with the, you know, noticing requirements and those kinds of things that accompany a standing subcommittee. So that's the recommendation is to dissolve those two, but to establish an ad hoc subcommittee, which is exempt from the Brown Act um, for the purposes of continuing to work on traffic calming and potentially uh, residential neighborhood parking. So uh, two part recommendation, um, but unfortunately we can't really continue to uh, have the subcommittees function as we originally envisioned. So um, I'll stop there. This is why we can't have nice things, something like that. At least until there's, you know, a, a different interpretation or if there's, you know, a way that we can kind of comply with the spirit of the Brown Act and, well, um, you know, the requirements of the law while also, you know, if there's a way to, for the groups to be able to, to work in a way that we had imagined them, there might be a way to get there. Um, we're just not there right now. Right. Okay, uh, I'm not sure that there's really any further discussion needed on that one. <clears throat> we'll move to uh, to item uh, eight, eight A on the long range calendar. Do I have to open it up for public oh. comment? Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. we actually need you to take action on the recommendation because we have to formally oh, dissolve. Okay. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, all right. So, so then we'll go through normal questions, public comment, and comments. Any any questions from any uh, commissioners? This is Lizzie. I had a question then about the process for forming ad hoc subcommittees going forward. Um, so, would it do we need to form ad hoc subcommittees in a public meeting, Brian? Yes. Um, so, yes, they must be established at a meeting and formalized on the agenda um, so that there's um, an understanding that an ad hoc committee is being established. Um, and the ad hoc committee needs to be set up kind of similarly to what how we're establishing the um, traffic calming subcommittee and the staff report. There needs to be a, a clearly defined purpose, um, you know, what they're, what they're working on and 
uh, what the duration of that group will be and what they'll be bringing back to um, to the commission when they're done with their work. So it's really um, you know still a, a formalized process, um, but it's not required to comply with um, uh, the Brown Act. Got it. And so just um, a follow up question to that. So would it make sense then, and perhaps this is something that would move into the discussion part. Um, so I apologize for jumping the gun there a little bit, but um, so would it make sense for us when we look at the long range calendar to then flag things that should have ad hoc subcommittees and get those set up like as we do the long range calendar? Um, is that something we could do? Yeah, that's totally permissible. So we could put on the long range agenda, um, you know, establish an ad hoc subcommittee for that item um, concurrent or like a month or two before that item is scheduled on the long range calendar. So you know that that group is, you know, able to meet before that item comes to the commission. So yes, we can definitely do that. Cool. Okay. Thank you. It's a great idea. Okay. Any other questions from commissioners? Okay, let's go to public comment. Anyone from the public would like to speak about the BTSSC subcommittees? All right, seeing none, back to you, Tim. All right, any uh, commissioner comments? And I think we'd be looking for a motion to uh, follow staff recommendation or and or uh, I, I see, uh, Commissioner Bolte, you have a, a comment. Yeah, I'm. I'm disappointed we can't do the subcommittee thing as uh, the chair proposed it. I thought it was productive. Oh, he's on mute. Uh, Commissioner Bolte, you're on mute. Oh, that was weird. I went to mute. Um, where was I? You said you were happy that the, the chair um, said we could have subcommittees. Let's start from the beginning. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm yeah, I'm disappointed that uh, uh, we can't legally do this. I thought it was productive and I thought it was a good system as the uh, chair set it up. Um, I like uh, Lizzie's idea um, and I want to uh, move that the commission endorse the staff recommendation and uh, form these, uh, this ad hoc subcommittee. Great. Is there a second to um, Commissioner Bolte's motion? I'll second it, Ayush. Okay. Great. Any discussion before we go to a vote? All right. Seeing none. Tim. Aye. Lizzie. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Brooke. Aye. Francois. Aye. Ayush. Aye. Joe. Okay. All right. And I would agree as we um, move on here that, um, you know, our subcommittees, I, I did feel like we hit our stride and um, we were getting some really good stuff done. Like I don't think this committee has done in many years. Um, so uh, hopefully, Lizzie, I think your suggestion is phenomenal and um, that this can can take the place of the standing uh, subcommittees. Okay, uh, and on that note, we'll move to the long range calendar on item 8A. Jennifer, you want to pull that up? I won't go through each of these. I'll just talk about which things are changing. So um, we do have confirmation for Caltrans to present in July on the I-80 project. So that's uh, locked in. Mace Boulevard will not go in July. That will go uh, in September at the earliest. A new item for next month is Bob Clark um, does want to have a check-in with the commission um, to discuss uh, the traffic calming program to see how you guys feel like it's, how you feel it's working and how it's going, um, possibly address some of the issues that were raised during uh, public comment today. That's um, uh, in preparation for him going to city council, I think the second meeting in uh, in July. 
um, because they've asked for um, sort of a a check-in with them on the traffic calming program. So uh, that's new, but it'll be coming next month. Um, Other than that, I don't think there's uh, any real changes that I can see. So I'll just uh, leave it there and open up for discussion. Got it. And um, and so because we're out of the regular items, right? We're like, well, this is just if anybody has questions, we can talk amongst. All right, great. Any questions on the on the long range calendar? Anyone? Brian, I had a comment. Is that I'll I'm not going to be attending the September commission meeting, and my item okay. is September. Oh, I see. Yeah, we can talk about that offline. Yeah. The September one or the July one? Is that what you said? No, I'm going to be missing the September meeting in my items. Okay, I got it. Okay. All right. Yeah, the, the Vision Zero local road safety plan is her item. Um, so we'll have to schedule that for another meeting. Okay. And no items uh, looks like that will need ad hoc um subcommittees for it doesn't look like brian right well actually i mean i think the vision zero local road safety plan would it would be nice to have a, some sort of ad hoc committee to um review it ahead of time and and give me some feedback on it um but i don't know if i'm there yet and i think that we have plenty of time on that one if that's in september yeah. i was really looking at next month so I think we're okay on that one, or at least we've got some time. I'll put it that way. Well, we wouldn't be able to establish any ad hoc committees for anything that comes next month. And so let's say theoretically speaking that the Jennifer's item in September was gonna stay on that meeting date, then we would need to establish the ad hoc subcommittee uh, at the July meeting in order for them to, to work on that. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, all right, any other comments on that before we move on? We'll move on to um, item 8B, commissioner announcements. Uh, commissioner Patel. Yeah, I just wanted to give some parting comments um, because this is my last meeting as we know from the last meeting. Um, it's definitely been an educational experience for me as a student. Coming into this commission, I had a far less um, immersed background in transportation and bicycling especially, and coming out, I definitely felt like I've learned and grown a lot. Um, my, I've told Tim this, but I don't know how many of the others know this. My career aspiration is to become a city manager. So these um, experiences that I've learned from the commission for city governance and urban planning has definitely allowed me to acknowledge some of the issues that go on in California cities. Um, So thank you. It's been an honor and a privilege to serve. We're gonna miss you. (laughs) Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Bolte, did you have a- uh... Hi colleagues, this is my last meeting too. Thanks for all the collaboration. Uh, It's been very educational and I, I wish everyone the best. Yeah, and, and um, so, yeah, I maybe mean, I'll just chime in for a second there. I just, you know, um, Commissioner Patel, you've sort of been my right-hand man, I feel like, on, on this commission, and we've been through some ups and downs, um, you know, in the last uh, year and a half, two years almost. Um, so, you know, really appreciate your leadership and participation and um, energy. So you'll definitely be missed. And, and same for you, Commissioner Bolte. I mean, you have such a passion for transportation that's really hard to find. And, you know, we need folks like yourself who are such advocates. And um, so, you know, definitely appreciate everything that you've done and, and um, your passion for, for this. Um, so well, best of luck to both of you and, and don't be strangers. Thank you. If, if you don't mind, I'd like to just, echo those comments as well. Both of you have been really valuable contributors to all of the discussions that we've had coming to the BTSSC. You guys think, think it through. Your attendance has been you know, exceptional. Um, and you couldn't really ask for two better commissioners to participate. Um, you know, there are, 
it's always hard when commissioners leave because right when you feel like you're hitting your stride, as Tim mentioned, then, you know, it seems like there's always somebody dropping out and, um, you know, you two will be missed and we hope that you stay uh, plugged in the things that we're doing that we hear from you on occasion. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, and I'm going to echo those comments. I mean, Ayush, you've been, you've been with me on UAC. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to miss you. You're, I mean, I hope you have a fun time at USC, you know, doing, I think your master's program, right? Yeah. I honestly like, yeah, I, like, I, I wish you the best of luck. You've been a phenomenal person and same goes with you, Joe. Like I remember the first time you walked into the UAC meeting, I'm like, so someone actually voluntarily went to the UAC meeting. What? <laughs> um, but like your, but your passion, like I gotta say, you know, both Ayush and Joe, your passion is unmatched for anyone I've seen in my entire life. This is coming from a person who like lived in Hong Kong, which is like super transportation dense. Like your, like your passion for transportation goes beyond what I've ever seen before. And I wish you both the best of luck in your journeys to come. Thank you for those passionate comments, Francois. All right, any other commissioner announcements? Okay, moving on to item 8C, any uh, subcommittee reports, reports on meetings attended, inter-jurisdictional bodies, inter-commission liaisons, and we've got a couple of liaison assignments, um, Unitrans Advisory Committee, Committee, and the Climate Action uh, Adaptation Plan. When we start with any updates from commissioners on the first thing, and then we can go into the um, sure. collection of tiers. Sure. Any uh, subcommittee reports? Not hearing much. Or reports on meetings attended. All right. So why don't we go on to the liaison assignments? All right. So with Ayesha's departure, We'll need, um, there's a designated seat on the Unitrans Advisory Committee for someone from this um, commission. And so uh, we would need to fill that position and um, we'd like to get that done today. So if anybody has an interest in how Unitrans operates and the decision-making. Oh, right. Uh, it, oh, fair to have a hand up? Yeah. Huh? Well, we can either go right to that if, um, or if you have any questions about uh, the commitment, um, Ayush no, can answer any questions. Let's sign him up. <laughs> we have a former chair for this commission right here. I, so. I, I volunteer as tribute. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> it, it's actually not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Francois. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Kaplan. All right, we'll, we'll pencil him in. Okay, and um, if you don't mind, we can move on to the Climate Action Adaptation Plan with Austin um, departing. After last month's meeting, Tim has agreed to step into his role because he was the alternate. Now we're just looking for somebody to volunteer on Climate Action Adaptation Plan uh, project in the event that, that Tim um, is not able to attend like an NRC, a Natural Resources Commission meeting where they uh, host most, most of their discussions. So I'm looking for a volunteer for that. And, and I think my only plug for that is that like, if you obviously transportation, I mean, in terms of the climate, climate change is a huge part of it. And so this is really, I think, important to the core goals of what we do. Um, and I think it's totally worthwhile if, um, if somebody's willing to, to take that position. Um, I think uh, obviously uh, Austin Brown was a pretty good fit uh, as well. And so those are some, some big shoes that you'd be stepping into. Uh, any, any volunteers for, uh, for that? Tim, are you looking for a new regular or um, for an alternate? I'd love somebody to become a new regular. Um, but uh, but if, if we've just got an alternate, I think that's fine. So just to let you know, right now, um, the next set of meetings through the CAP are focused on action. So if you're interested in 
how that that plan is really going to make a difference in the actions that are going to live in that plan, then then this is your chance to have some sort of insight and be able to um, give your input on the actions. And for reference, we did hear uh, through our city administration that we will continue to use these uh, Zoom format for for city meetings. So. Um, so it will still be you know, fairly easy to attend those meetings because you can do it right from your home. So if you have any you know, household obligations that you think might have been problematic because you thought we might be returning to uh, in-person meetings, um, I don't think that's a, a concern for uh, the foreseeable future. What's the foreseeable future, just out of curiosity? I would say I'm comfortable saying through like October, um, I think that circumstances could change by then, but I would, I think we're pretty safe through October. And do you think from there, there'll be, sorry, like a hybrid model? Yeah. I mean, you would think that that would make sense to increase participation also. Yeah. That was also raised in, um, you know, sort of the memo that went out is that, yeah, there's value in having the face-to-face -face meetings, right. But there's also value in making the meetings more accessible to more people. So, um, it really comes down to making sure that the rooms where we host meetings are, you know, can be enabled with the technology. Uh, some rooms lend that themselves to that better than others. But even if it's just, you know, having a laptop up with the, you know, the, the camera that's available on the laptop, then, you know, maybe that's what we do. Um, but we haven't sort of figured out those details. We're trying to find a way to blend them. Got it. Thanks. Sorry. Any volunteers? It's great to hear, Brian. Don't everybody raise their hands at once. Well, if there's no if there's no volunteers, I, I'm I'm okay to stick with it for a while and I'll we'll do some lobbying amongst the commission to replace me. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think that's it. So um, uh, item number nine is um, to adjourn. Would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? This is Ayush. I'll make the motion to adjourn. This is Joe. I was giving you the thumbs up right there, Ayush. <laughs> you, you needed it. Yeah, that's the way to do it. I could see it. <laughs> All right. We're going to miss your uh, motions. Tim. Aye. Lizzie. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Brooke. Aye. Francois. Aye. Ayush. Aye. Joe. Aye. All right. That's it. Great meeting, everyone. Bye, Welcome everyone. Take care. Welcome, new commissioners, and thank you to uh, Ayush and, and Joe. We'll I think this was a this was a record meeting. I think this might have been uh, the shortest on record, at least in many years. I wasn't years. gonna say it. I, I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> I knew we could do it. I, I and I was. This was not one that I would have predicted. So um, thank you, everybody. Appreciate um, your participation, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all next month. Except uh, Ayush and Joe, uh, happy trails and uh, good luck on your future endeavors. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice night. Yeah. Thank you. Good one, everybody.